Hello, everyone. Welcome to this talk. And today, we're exciting to we're excited to present to you with a new Argo City extension that we're calling Ephemeral Access that we've been develop developing insight into it lately. And our main goal with this new extension is to enhance uh, compliance and safety, especially using Argo City UI. First of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Leonardo Luz Almeida. I usually go by Leo. I'm a staff software developer at Intuit. Hi, I'm Vijay Agrawal. I am the group engineer manager leading CI CD at Intuit. And uh, today we'll, uh, let's go over the agenda briefly today. Uh, we'll look at Intuit developer platform, the scale it operates at, and some of the numbers around that. Then we'll move into some of the operational challenges that we have to deal with uh, when we are dealing at that scale. And then Leo will walk us through a demo of uh, the new feature uh, that we are all here to uh, see today, which is ephemeral access. And then we'll look at some of the technical architecture and details around how we bring that uh, uh, demo to life. And then we'll look at some of the next steps that we are planning on this feature. And uh, if time permits, we'll have uh, some time for Q&A. So let's look at uh, Intuit is basically a big fintech firm, and you must have used uh, products like TurboTax or QuickBooks, Credit Karma, Mailchimp, uh, and we serve over 100 million customers. So fairly big uh, uh, platform, and uh, we'll look at the Argo CD platform specifically. We have over 50 plus Argo CD instances running at Intuit. They are supporting over 325 clusters, uh, managing resources in those clusters, and uh, managing over 331k applications uh, within them. So fairly big platform, uh, and with that platform uh, uh, comes some challenges that we'll look at shortly. Uh, in terms of open source, we have been an user award winner in 2019 and 22. Uh, created several open source tools like Admiral, Argo, Numa, and um, been an active contributor um, representing almost 23% of Argo City contributors. Uh, in terms of some of the operational challenges uh, that we face uh, when um, dealing with that uh, scale is uh, a lot of times uh, we feel that there is a lack of fine-grained uh, permissioning model for Argo CD. So when users want to uh, perform operation in their production clusters, like simple operation like deleting a pod, uh, we need to give them full access to the uh, uh, Argo CD instance, and they can potentially uh, sort of uh, perform actions that may bring down the cluster. Uh, second uh, challenge that we face is around security. Uh, we have long-standing access for most of our users who need to perform operations in production. And that uh, long-lived access, if their credentials does get compromised, uh, poses a security risk. Uh, the third is uh, there, uh, when you perform changes in Argo CD UI, a lot of times, or most of the times, it's very hard to provide any auditing to those or see what the user might have done. And it's a challenge to control that access um, and, and record those changes um, and, and be compliant from a production um, uh, perspective. Uh, the other is uh, at Intuit, we have this uh, deployment freeze windows when we event, have events like tax peaks or we have events like end year uh, counting. Uh, during that time, we don't want to change anything in our production clusters or any application. And we want to enforce deployment freezes across the board. And we are able to do a good job when we are uh, doing it from a GitOps perspective. But when it comes to non-GitOps changes, we struggle a bit with that. And we'll see uh, in, in, uh, how we are addressing that. So our approach has been sort of threefold. One is uh, around ephemeral access that provide access only when uh, to the resources they need and when they need it. Um, the other is around uh, deep integration with change management system. Um, so integrate Argo CD with change management system so that you can track and audit in a central place where your other tools changes that are being per performed on our application, um, you can also sort of get a single pane of class for that. Uh, other is around fine-grained access, so you only provide access to what they need. And there is a talk dedicated um, um, separately today, later on, for this section for fine-grained RBAC. Um, uh, so please attend that talk. Uh, Katie and Alex will be presenting that talk. Uh, let's briefly talk around ephemeral access, uh, what it is for people not familiar. Uh, there are three key requirements. One is just in time, so you get access when you need it. Uh, you don't have it previously. And then second is 
um, you get it for a limited uh, duration. So it gets auto removed once you are done with your access. So you might need it for 15 minutes, two hours, whatever uh, act uh, operation you are performing in, but you only have it for a limited duration of time. And the third is it should be the model, whatever you are using should be flexible. Um, so I talked about deployment freeze windows. It should be able to support that, that during those freeze windows, the access, ephemeral access controller should be able to sort of uh, decline the request because uh, it should detect that we are in this uh, freeze window. Then it should be able to also support manual uh, uh, approvals. Like it should be able to bypass those approvals. If you are in an incident, you should just be able to provide the incident number and it should just uh, skip any manual approvals uh, for, for that duration of time. Uh, uh, obvious advantages are it improves your security and compliance because you are able to um, sort of only provide a time-bound access to your production environment. And secondly, it increases accountability and auditability because um, you can actually see who performed a change, when they performed a change, and to what resource they performed the change on. Uh, let's look at change management integration. So there are a couple of key aspects uh, of change management system at Intuit. One is uh, being able to record those changes and communicate those changes happening across all the products um, uh, in a consistent manner. So whether you are doing changes through kubectl, whether you are doing changes through Argo CD UI or through a GitOps manner, you should all be able to see them in a consistent manner and in a single tool so that when things go south, you can see all the changes that are being done on, on on your particular application. And then secondly, uh, we want to see, um, uh, we have some uh, compliance requirements like uh, every change that goes into a production system, um, we should have a change request associated with that. Um, uh, and that requirement sort of enforced us that when you're doing changes through Argo CD UI, uh, we need to be able to track them as well. And we'll see how we are uh, sort of uh, uh, bringing that to life now. Changes itself, you can see there are two types of changes. One is primarily GitOps changes, which are uh, mostly your deployment pipelines or your, uh, you're creating a PR to update your manifest. Um, these are typically easy to track. You can sort of integrate that within your workflows uh, by calling the API from your change management system and you can have a manual approval uh, or auto approval based on your needs, right? So typically these are uh, easy to integrate with change management. Today we'll focus on manual or ad hoc changes and these are changes like like you are using Argo CD UI to do it, or you are using kubectl to do it, and these are uh, inherently not supported by a um, lot of these tooling, right? So how can you bring um, changes that you are doing in UI um, to sort of play nicely with um, uh, your change management system? Um, these are that's why it's hard to track or integrate with, and uh, these typically require manual approval because you are going to perform changes on your production cluster, uh, and you need traceability around those changes um, to be performed. Uh, let's see how in action a demo of how we are bringing this to life, and Leo will walk us through that. Thank you, Vijay. All right. Um, First of all, I have this demo recorded. If you want to take a look at, at it running locally, uh, you can look for me at Argo booth, uh, at Intuit booth or Argo booth during KubeCon. Um, I have it, everything running locally, but for this presentation, I'm going to be running the recording. And here I have Argo CD and everything configured locally. I have created a username for, for, for the purpose of this demo. I'm going to be signing in. And the first thing I'd like to show you is the user info section. So I'm going to, be, going to be pausing here for a sec. So this solution requires Argo CD to be, conf to be configured with an OIDC provider. If you're not familiar with the term, OIDC stands for OpenID Connect, and it's pretty much the mechanism that Argo CD uses to authenticate users. Um, so at Intuit, we use GitHub for, for, for a while. Now we're moving to the internal uh, um, uh, Intuit provider. So here in this, uh, in this demo, I'm, I'm, I'm running, uh, I, I added these two groups under uh, my user. So I have this uh, group one and group two. Those two groups are associated with my token. And this is going to be used, used afterwards to really validate if my user can have the access elevated or not. Okay, moving on with the demo, I have this uh, ephemeral application created. And here you can see that we have two new components in the UI. There, there's this new permission button and this new section here that shows me the, my, my current access, right? So here I have read access currently. <clears throat> and 
If I go and click on the permission button, button it shows this new sliding window with some, some text that, that is configurable and my current access uh, what it is. So let's try to delete a pod and see what happens with my current access. So I'm trying to delete a pod and I'm getting permission denied um, because my user doesn't have the, the necessary access. So let's inspect how the app project is configured currently. So if you're familiar with this already, Argo CD has this app project, which is a resource that is associated with your application resource. And currently this app project has only the admin role and uh, I'm not associated with this role. That's the reason why I can't do any operation that mutates the resource. Let's move on and request the access using the extension. And a few things happen here behind the scenes. I'm gonna be driving you to everything that happened uh, behind the scenes here. But one thing I'd like to highlight, a few things I'd like to highlight here in this new uh, sliding window is the role. I got uh, assigned a role called DevOps. The status is uh, granted and it expires uh, after some pre-configured amount of time, okay? Uh, one thing I'd like you to notice as well is that in the Argo CD UI, there is a new, uh, the, 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 that area is now updated to show my current access. So it's now uh, showing me DevOps and as you can see, now I can delete pods as well. I'm, I, I can, for example, restart uh, a deployment uh, which are operations that previously weren't available for my user. So you may have noticed uh, the expired uh, configuration that was presented in the sliding window before. So that, what, what's going to happen is at any, moment, at any moment now, this should be reverted back because the expired was configured to uh, elapse after one minute. So yeah, as you can see now, it's uh, back to read. And if I go back and try to delete again, I get permission denied back to my original access. And I'll try just to simplify uh, something that could cause uh, uh, production downtime, like deleting uh, a deployment entirely. And yeah, that's obviously not a good thing to do. And let's finally look at the, the same project and now you can, you can see that there's a new role associated with this project. And let's click in this role, and uh, you can notice here on the right that there are policies associated with this role that were dynamically created in the app project. So this is it about the demo. So let's get back to the presentation. And um, yeah, I'd like to drive you into a bit more details about how this works behind the scenes. Um, sorry if this looks a little bit complicated at first. I'm going to drive you into all the steps here. Hopefully at the end everything is going to make uh, a lot of sense. Uh, the first thing I'd like to highlight here is this, uh, this square in the middle of the diagram. Those are representing the CRDs that are uh, collaborating to, uh, to provide this whole experience. Uh, and everything you see in orange in the diagram are Argo City components. Those are already there, available if you're using Argo CD today. And every, everything you see in green are the components that belong to this new extension, okay? So from the top, um, we have this uh, component, the Argo CD Ephemeral Access, the UI extension. So everything you saw from the demo, the button that opens the sliding window, the widget that shows the current access, um, the button that requests the, the elevated permission. This is all powered by the UI extension, okay? So the UI extension will be communicating back with Argo CD API server using the mechanism that we call uh, proxy extension, and that is gonna be communicating with this backend service. Because we're dealing with uh, uh, elevated access, this logic couldn't be implemented in the UI. So users cannot uh, uh, change, if, if, we, if we ever implemented this in the UI, user could, could tweak, tweak this and, and, and uh, bypass the, 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 the roles and, and everything we wanted, the constraints that we implemented in the system. So the backend is there to support the UI with all the functionality that it provides. So it does so by validating the, the incoming user has the specific group claims associated with that that are necessary to get their access elevated. It does so by reaching, by fetching this uh, CRD that we called access binding. 
let's have a very quick look at the access binding CRD and see how that is defined. I'm not going to drive you into all the fields here. I'd just like to, you to pay attention on the, on the ones, on the attributes in bold. Uh, the, the access binding has this role uh, template ref associated with it. So whenever a user gets their access uh, elevated, that's the role template that is going to be used. And I'm going to be explaining the role template in a few moments for you. And those are the list of subjects that are going to be uh, validated for the incoming user to match if they should have their access elevated or not. All right. So. Once this is validated from the back end, then ultimately when users click the access request button, if everything is fine, it will create this access request CRD. It will apply that in the cluster, and that's when the back end service ends its responsibility. Uh, first of all, let's, uh, let's take a look at the access request. Uh, again, real quick, um, the, the, this is not a resource that is meant to be manually applied in the cluster by a user. This is automatically created by the backend service. And again, going real quick on the attributes here, we have the application. So the access request is only associated with a specific Argo CD application. It has a duration associated with that. It has a role that it will be referencing, and it's for one dedicated user, OK? All right, so that concludes, again, the backend responsibility and triggers the controller. Once that access request is persisted, is applied in Kubernetes, the access request controller will be watching that resource and will be running the reconciliation loop. So the goal for the, the main responsibility for the, for the controller is to ultimately create this uh, dynamic role in the app project. And it does so by looking at the access request, inspecting what is the role template ref that was associated there, and fetch this final CRD that is part of this solution called role template. So the role template looks like this. It's a very simple CRD that has only three attributes. Uh, one thing I'd like you to, to, I'd like to, to highlight for you is the, the policies one, which, which is probably the most important, which is the attribute that is going to be driving what exactly the, the user can do whenever they get their access elevated. And as you may have noticed, um, the, the name of the, the resource is role template. So this is a templated policy. So we provide a few variables there that you can use as an admin to compose your policies based for, uh, for, for, for a specific application, specific project, uh, or namespace. OK, once that is uh, fetched from the, from the cluster and uh, rendered, right, because it's a template, it needs to be rendered for the scope for that specific application, then it gets applied back in the app project, and then it's Argo CD who has the responsibility to deal with that elevated access. Once that duration elapses its time, then the controller goes back and removes the user from the role, but the role remains associated in the app project, okay? Last but not least, the last component here I'd like to show you is uh, new. Uh, this is not there today. This is gonna be uh, in, the, yeah, in the near future. Um, this is a requirement for us uh, at Intuit. So we're going to be implementing a plugin mechanism that users are going to be allowed to attach in the controller. So the main purpose for this plugin is because we have the necessity at Intuit, for example, to have uh, a change request created and approved before any change is applied in, in production environment. Okay, so Intuit, for example, uses ServiceNow as a tool for managing change requests. This is appropriate, uh, the tool is not proprietary, but we're gonna be using proprietary APIs. So we cannot make the plugin itself available on open source, but we're making it, the, we're making the plugin uh, uh, mechanism available for, so in, if, if, if in your company you use Jira, for example, as a change management system, then you can develop a plugin and hook up in the access request controller, and that is going to be validated before ultimately getting the real role assigned in the app project. All right, so moving on, what are the next steps? Uh, we have, as I mentioned today, uh, the plan is to the, the implement this additional plugin mechanism to allow use cases like change management integration, um, but not only that, the plugin could do potentially anything uh, you, can, you can imagine uh, that makes sense to be plugged at that part of the process. 
Um, so this, that's, that piece is going to be available uh, in the next, next version. Um, we want to improve auditing and monitoring, and what I mean by that is because this is part of our auditing and we want to make sure that everything is available in the log, so we want to make sure that um, from looking at the logs, we know exactly when the user got their access elevated, when it got revoked. This, the, the logs is already there today, obviously, but we want to tweak, tweak it a little bit and make sure this is all there <clears throat> available for us. Also on the monitoring side, there are a few Prometheus metrics that we want to make it available <clears throat> that are not there today. And last but not least, the scalability. So the plugging mechanism is now is currently designed to work with the pooling mechanism, and we're thinking about having that implemented with, uh, with some sort of event-based uh, mechanism, uh, probably exposing a webhook or anything like that. And that concludes my part of the presentation. I hand it back to Vijay, and thanks everyone. Thanks, Leo, for walking us through all those uh, details uh, of the architecture. So I'd like to uh, point to some few takeaways that you can take from today's presentation. One is, uh, if you do implement uh, this uh, ephemeral access within your production uh, environment, um, then you'll um, obviously see a bump in your security and compliance for the overall um, ecosystem. It follows principle of least privilege, so you only give access to what the user needs. Um, it reduces your attack surface because uh, you have very time-bound credentials, so even somebody gets hold of those credentials, um, it'll be for a very limited duration, and if they are not in that elevated state, um, then they can't do anything with those credentials. The third is um, you'll be able to track all your production changes um, uh, um, easily within the Argo CD itself, and then uh, you can enforce custom uh, scenarios, like we have code freeze, you might have your own scenarios that you would be able to integrate uh, the solution with. Um, in terms of reliability and resilience as well, uh, we foresee uh, improvement going forward. Um, uh, and, and able to reduce incidents caused by human error. Uh, what we have seen in last few months, um, uh, we have seen um, incidents happen because um, uh, of reasons where people are trying to delete a pod and they end up deleting a replica set and killing the whole deployment and bringing the application down. Um, and, and we want to build safeguards for users um, to prevent them from making such mistakes. And this framework allows us to be able to do that. Uh, the other is environment isolation. Again, we have seen a class of incidents where people have their production and uh, uh, pre-prod environment open simultaneously, and they are trying to make a change in pre-prod, and by mistake, they will make it in prod, like most of us might have done that at some point in our career, right? Um, so we want to prevent against that. So we are isolating our uh, pre-prod with prod environment so that you can you are free to play in pre-prod, but for prod, you need access, and like there is a very, um, you can see your access levels uh, in, in the UI. Um, other is around faster MTTR. Like a lot of times, we have seen when we are in incidents, we are trying to see what happened to this application. Like, what are the change um, that have caused it? Like, almost 30 to 40 percent of incidents are change induced. And a simple thing would believe is like rolling back that change should bring it back. But just tracking like what changed is the hard problem, and it takes uh, anywhere like up to an hour to be able to track that. Uh, so we want to um, uh, improve our uh, auditability and accountability around it, which will empower us to sort of um, uh, bring our services back much faster and improve our overall MTTR. Uh, so with that, we would like to end our presentation. I hope you liked our presentation today. And uh, if you would like to uh, sort of see the demo that we gave today, there is a link there. Uh, you can get a link to the slides. And um, you can also visit the repo that has all the code that empowers, um, that powers this um, experience. And most importantly, do give us feedback or what you would like to see in this feature in the uh, future. Uh, and you can always visit our, our booth and and catch us there. Thanks a lot today. Thanks, everybody.